Good morning, everybody. Just wait and make sure it's working. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name's Leslie, and I'm a reader at Congleton Parish. Uh, welcome this morning worship, morning prayer for Wednesday. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depth of sleep, open our eyes to your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the works of your fingers and the moons and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them? Mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with honour and glory. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and you have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Now our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 119, as I say, not all of it, but we are at the end of it and it's um, first from verses 153. Oh, consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me according to your promise. Give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do so for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. May th many there are that persecute and oppress me, yet do I not swerve from your testimonies? It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and your righteous judgments endure for evermore. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I, I am as glad of your word as the one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you.
because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation and I have fulfilled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord, give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you, deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hands reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live and it shall praise you, and let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like the sheep that is lost. O oh, seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandment. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. God of mercy, swift to help us, as our lips pour forth your praise, fill our hearts with peace, the peace you give to those who wait for your salvation. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with your glory. For I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with your glory. Now, our readings. The first one is from Samuel. Uh, Samuel chapter 20, uh, sorry, chapter 19, and it's beginning at verse 8. David starts back to Jerusalem. Meanwhile, all the Israelites had fled, each man to his own home. All over the country they started quarrelling among themselves. King David saved us from our enemies, they said to one another. He rescued us from the Philistines, but now he has fled from Absalom and left the country. We anointed Absalom and as our king, but he has been killed in battle. So why doesn't somebody try to bring David back? The news of what the Israelites were saying reached King David. So he sent the priests, Zadok and Abiathar, to ask the leaders of Judah, Why should you be the last to help bring the king back to his palace? You are my relatives, my own flesh and blood. Why should you be the last to bring me back? David also told them to say to Amasa, You are my relative. From now on I am putting you in charge of the army in place of Joab. May God strike me dead if I don't. David's words won the complete loyalty of all the men of Judah, and they sent him word to return with all his officials. On his way back, the king was met at the river Jordan by the men of Judah, who had come to Gilgal to escort him across the river. At the same time, the, the, Benjamite, Shem, uh, the Benjamite Shemai, son of Gera, from Barum, hurried with the, to the Jordan to meet King David. He had with him a thousand men from the tribe of Benjamin, and Ziba, the, ser the servant of Saul's family, also came with his fifteen sons and twenty servants, and they arrived at the Jordan before the king. They crossed the river to escort the royal party across to do whatever the king wanted. And as the king was getting ready to cross, Shimei, threw himself down in front of him and said, Your Majesty, 
Please forget the wrong I did the day you left Jerusalem. Don't hold it against me or think about it any more. I know, sir, that I have sinned, and this is why I am the first one from the northern tribes to come and meet you, your majesty, today. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, spoke up. Shimei should be put to death because he cursed the one who the Lord chose as king. But David said to Abishai and his brother Joab, Who asked your opinion? Are you going to give me trouble? I am the one who is king of Israel now, and no Israelite will be put to death today. And he said to Shimei, I give you my word that you will not be put to death. This is the word of the Lord. Now the second reading is from Acts chapter 11, uh, beginning at verse 19. The church at Antioch. Some believers who, who were scattered by the persecution which took place, sorry, I'll start again. Some of the believers who were scattered by the persecution which took place when Stephen was killed went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, telling the message to the Jews only. But other believers, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and proclaimed the message to the Gentiles, also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus the Lord's power was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. The news about this reached the church in Jerusalem, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw how God had blessed the people, he was glad and urged them to be faithful and true to the Lord with all their hearts. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to, to look for Saul. When he found him, he took him to Antioch, and for a whole year the two met with the people of the church and taught a large group. It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. About that time, some prophets went from Jerusalem to Antioch, some of them, one of them named Agabus, stood up and by the power of the Spirit predicted that a severe famine was about to come over the earth. It came when Claudius was emperor. The disciples decided that each of them would send as much as he could to help their fellow believers who lived in Judea. This they did then and sent the money to the church elders by Barnabas and Saul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now there's a saying, no pain, no gain. And we under, when we undergo a trial, we can either become bitter or better. Hopefully we become better. In the reading from Acts today, we see a church that also grew through trials. The fact of the, in fact, the question could be asked, would the church have grown at all without the trials? The passage begins, the people had been scattered because of the persecution. But more importantly, those who were scattered were spreading the word to those who were not Jewish fulfilling Jesus' words that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. In other words, the Gentiles. But this hadn't been the case to start with, as the disciples had only been preaching to the Jewish people. But God had other plans, and we read in Isaiah, my word is like the snow and the rain that come down from the sky to water the earth. They make the crops grow and provide seed for planting and food to eat. So also will the word that I speak, so also will be the word that I speak. 
it will not fail to do what I plan for it. It will do everything I send it to do. It will not fail to do what I plan for it. It will do everything I send it to do. As I said, the persecution of the Christians in Jerusalem after the stoning of Stephen led to those who were fleeing, announcing the good news of the Lord. And the Lord's hand was with them. On hearing what was happening, the church sent Barnabas to Antioch. And this ensured the link with the apostles, and it was uh, that the link with the apostles was maintained. However, the apostles were not planning the mission. The Holy Spirit was planning and the apostles were catching up with what the Lord was doing. And this happens a number of times in Acts. The apostles in Jerusalem catch up with what the Lord was doing in the church. The Holy Spirit was at work. The Holy Spirit is at work now, at work in China, where the church, despite persecution, is growing and Bibles are constantly being requested. In North Korea, the most dangerous place on the planet to be a Christian, the church is growing. Across South America and Africa, the church is growing. Sometimes, it takes suffering before a situation can change. Maybe you have had to undergo some form of suffering, and if you have, I bet you're probably stronger for it. The Holy Spirit is waiting to be asked if you haven't. The prophet Jeremiah saw that if the vessel the potter was saw that if the pest vessel the potter was making did not turn out right, the potter would remould it. The Lord, like the potter, will remould us as individuals or a church, if necessary through suffering, until we fulfil the Lord's beautiful plan for us. Open Doors is a charity which helps support uh, persecuted Christians. They support through money, they support through practical help. And I'd just like to read you a little excerpt from this month's magazine uh, because a lot of Muslim converts are really um, persecuted. Life isn't easy for Syrian believers from a Muslim background. About 30% of Pastor George's church in Syria are now Christians who have converted from Islam and are among the most vulnerable to persecution. When a Muslim believer becomes a believer, of course they are persecuted, says Pastor George. Jesus said that in the world we will have a lot of trouble. When a Muslim becomes a Christian, they face persecution from their family because Islam forbids a Muslim to become a Christian. Pastor George has seen astonishing courage from new believers in his church. These Christians from Muslim backgrounds are well aware of the dangers, but still choose Jesus. Pastor George continues, They are not afraid to be killed. A lot of them openly declared their faith, through, though they knew that they might lose their inheritance, their properties, they might be threatened. And it isn't just threats. Some are beaten because of their faith. In one family, the parents threatened to kill the new believer. Because of that, the person had to flee. But they stayed firm in Jesus. Persecution leads to believers who abide more in God. They are ready to die for Jesus. Incredible faith. Words from Corinthians. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let us pray.
First of all, Lord, we bring you those Christians who are persecuted throughout the world, those who are suffering as a result of following you financially and physically. And Lord, we thank you for all those who are working to keep them going, both spiritually and physically, putting their own lives in danger. Amen. God, our Father, we remember before you the kaleidoscope of people that we call the church. The busy archbishop of whom everyone expects everything, but who most of all needs time to reflect and to pray. For those who help organise our church and have so much to think about on Sunday mornings that they scarcely have time for their own worship. For the loyal children and youth workers who need ideas, patience, a sense of humour and occasional thanks. For the older person who slips quietly in and out of church and just needs there to be there uninterrupted. For the people within our own church who can't make it to church at the moment. May your blessing rest on each one. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. God our Father we remember before you the world's great needs and its unnoticed sorrows. Countries where some are intoxicated with war and violence but most are desperately weary of it. Countries where a silent slaughter is still happening while the world's gaze has moved on. Countries like at the moment Brazil and India where the great swathes of the population have been affected by the COVID-19. Countries in deep need where children die for a want of clean water and a spoonful of sugar. May your blessing rest on each nation and all its people. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. God our Father we remember before you our families, friends and the communities where we live. The person who has a special problem to deal with the friend we may have neglected for too long, the neighbour who always looks so burdened and anxious. May your blessing rest on each person and, and place to renew and transform them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God our Father, we remember before you individuals in need of hope and we name them silently in your presence. On our heart is someone in hospital or ill at home. On our heart is someone suffering from depression or confusion. On our heart is someone suffering from the multiple problems of getting older. But on our heart is also the memory of a Lord who loved and healed and saved. May your blessing rest on each person we have named. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. God our Father we remember before you those who have died, the close relation who we still miss, 
the friend whose early death will always sadden us. The people in the news who tragically died this week. The child in a distant land, unknown to us, but known and loved by you, Lord. Grant us, with all who have known you in their hearts, a share in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today at whatever time you manage to watch this. And on Friday morning, Nick will be doing uh, his sort of singing bit uh, and worship. And on Sunday morning, there will be an all age service streamed. And then later on in the day, the communion service. Thank you for watching.